Hey guys, this video is actually a remake of one that I lost on YouTube in an editing error. It was deleted a while back, and since that happened, I just had a ton of requests to remake it. I finally found some time to work on it, so here we go. So basically, take two. Uh, what this video is going to be about is taking a, a webbing loop, making a seat harness, and integrating it into your turnout gear to use with a personal scape system. Bottom line, guys, it's about how you can save a ton of cash when you're putting a personal scape system together, at least on the, on the harness end. And to give you a perspective of that, guys, I have three harnesses in front of me, uh, which is a pretty good representation of the ones that are on the market. The first one on my left is by Rig Rescue Systems. This is their nylon version. Uh, it sells for around $160. You notice that it has the A-frame. This one actually has a double locking uh, clasp with a buckle. They also make this harness out of Kevlar. I think their Kevlar version is around $300. The harness in front of me and here in the center is the Gemter, also sometimes referred to as a Gemter. This is the same style of harness that the city of New York uses, except they issue their firefighters the Kevlar version. The one I have in my hand is made out of 100% nylon. Uh, it has the big hook, also the A-frame. The nylon sells for around $200 to $220. The Kevlar, I believe, is, is $300 and all. On my right, this harness is made by Morning Pride, Honeywell, uh, for the Morning Pride gear. It's 100% Kevlar. It's uh, primarily designed to be integrated into the turnout gear. Uh, they have a patent on it. But uh, you can also buy this, this harness independently and wear it on the outside of your gear. Uh, the Kevlar harness here sells for, I think, $250 to $300. Important for you guys to know that uh, later this fall, 2012, they're doing another revision on the NFPA 1983 rope rescue standard. And to my understanding, one of the changes that they're making with personal escape is a requirement that any harness, whether it's an escape belt or seat harness, be made out of 100% Kevlar. I don't know that for a fact yet, but that's, that's what I've heard from some pretty reliable sources. And the reason for that is the Kevlar is stronger, but even more importantly, it has the additional heat resistance over nylon. Uh, especially when you're wearing the harness on the outside of your gear, uh, it's just a greater exposure. So just like our gear has a much better heat resistance, they want the, the harness or belt to be compatible with that as well. Now, you got a perspective of once we start to jump up, just a basic nylon seat harness is pretty pricey. You, once you jump up to Kevlar, you're, you're $300. That's the price range you're looking at. The harness that I have integrated into my gear right now is, is made out of one inch tubular nylon. It's basically the same thing that I have in my hand. You can put this, this webbing loop together and fasten a harness for as little as $4. Add a carabiner on to it, good quality carabiner, another, another $10, $15. Um, around 20 bucks, you can put together a high quality harness. Now yes, this is still made out of nylon, but understand guys, you can go online and you can find Kevlar one inch webbing for as little as a dollar a foot. So it's still going to be very cost effective. Okay, A lot less expensive than a commercially made seat harness. And honestly guys, when you wear this and you load it, it's nearly as comfortable as a commercially made seat harness. Okay? To kind of give you a perspective of the size that you need, Okay, because the harness itself, guys, the webbing loop is very size specific based on the individual. Okay, your your height, your weight, you know how big your legs are, how big your waist up, your waist is. Uh, to kind of give you a perspective on size, uh, I'm not a I'm not a big dude. I, I'm five ten, I weigh a buck seventy. Uh, my my waist is thirty inches, so I wear thirty inch jean. Uh, the my bunker pants are thirty four inches because obviously they're going over your street clothes. The web loop I have in my hand is a five and a half foot loop. It's made from a 12 and a half foot length of webbing. Again, specifically is one is tubular webbing, but you can, you can purchase the Kevlar as I said. It's tied together with a water knot. I don't want to get into how to tie a water knot. Uh, if, you, if you don't know how to already, to make this webbing loop, you can go on my YouTube page. Uh, you'll find a video that shows you how to, to tie a water knot and fasten a webbing loop. What I want to specifically just talk about, guys, is show you what the harness looks like first and foremost on the outside of your gear and then show you how you can integrate it into your gear. The big advantage of having an integrated harness, especially if you go nylon, is you minimize the exposure of that harness to heat. 
but even more importantly, you minimize the entanglement uh, elements of the seat harness itself. Uh, I talked to a lot of guys, I correspond with a few guys uh, on the city of New York who have the Gempter. One of their big complaints is that the leg loops present a huge entanglement hazard. Again, their harness is worn on the outside of the gear. So any fence, any fire escape, railing, any hazard on a window when they're making entry or, or, or egress, or exiting, inevitably gets caught on these leg loops. And it's a major problem for them. And, uh, and it's actually a major safety concern. By integrating the harness into your gear, you eliminate that. So first and foremost, let's take a look at what the harness looks like on the outside of your gear, and then we'll show you how to integrate it. Okay guys, before I show you the harness that I use, um, understand that there are a lot of methods, a lot of variations for tying a seat harness using webbing. Uh, the, the technique that I use, I like. It works well for me. It also works really great for integrating it into your turnout gear. If you have a, a different style, a different version that works well for you, by all means, go for it. But this is the one that I use. So to tie this harness, you're going to start with the water knot. I'm going to take it and I'm going to place the water knot in the middle of my back. Then I'm going to take the rest of the webbing and come around my body, almost like a big U. I'm going to locate the lower webbing loop in between my legs. I'm going to bring that webbing loop up. That's going to go over the top, over the top of the right and left loops. I bring the lower portion of the left side up, high on my thigh, and the same with the right. These two loops right here is where you attach your carabiner for your escape system. Now when I say that the harness is size specific guys, this is in essence, these two loops are making your A-frame. If you want these loops longer so they stick more out of your turnout gear, then you're going to have to lengthen your harness. Okay? If you want them shorter, you're subsequently going to shorten the harness. So start out with a longer piece of webbing, keep your water knot loose, and then, you know, experiment with, with various lengths. Okay? So that's, in essence, what it looks like when it's fastened. This is what it looks like from the back. Again, water knot right in the middle of your back. Okay, your leg loops. Let's take a look at how to integrate it into your gear. Before we get started, it's important to understand that for you to be able to integrate the webbing harness into your turnout gear, you have to have a snap-in liner. If you have an older set of gear where your moisture barrier thermal liner is stitched directly to your outer shell, or you have a set of gear where your liner is connected to your shell with a zipper, then what I'm about to show you isn't going to work. If that's the case, you're going to have to further modify or retrofit your gear by stitching in additional snaps or velcro tabs that will give you something to attach your harness to. If you do have the snaps, the first thing you want to do is disconnect the liner from the shell. Once you've unfastened all the snaps, remove enough of the liner so that you can expose both the right and left leg. It's not necessary to completely remove the liner. This is about as far as you need to go. Now slide the liner and shell out of your way and lay out your webbing loop. Now what I like to do guys is, is take the webbing, lay it flat and eliminate all the twists out of the webbing. Just like I have it here. I'm going to want the water knot closest to my body with the tails up in the air. You're going to make basically a large oval. Once you have it where you want it, grab your liner and shell and bring it over the top of the webbing loop. Find that center portion of your liner and lay it right on top of the water knot. Now, this is what I want it to look like. These tails coming up on top and it'll be evident, uh, you understand why, once you see the harness integrated in the gear. But I want kind of a downward angle of these, of these tails coming out of the water knot. We'll show you once we have the harness in place why we do that. So I should be able to see that center loop in between the legs. 
Take a little extra time, guys, as I said, to minimize any twists in the webbing. It's going to be impossible to eliminate all of them. But the flatter the webbing lays within your gear, the more comfortable it's going to be. So I got the center loop just like you see here. I'm going to come over to the right and come underneath the center loop just like so. Here's what I want it to look like. A key element here, guys, is to make sure that you keep this portion of the webbing, which is your leg, separate from your waist. Avoid twisting the webbing up. Keep these two sections separate. Come over to the left. Again, I'm taking a little extra time to make sure I'm not twisting it up. I'm going to do the exact same thing on this side. Okay. Again, leg portion separate from the waist. I don't know how well you can see this, but this is what you want it to look like. Okay. Now, to hold these two loops in place, you can put a knee right on top of them as you bring your shell over your liner. It's about as far as you need to go. Now I'll come back to these front loops. Another key element here guys is you need to capture these loops between your shell and your liner. So before I do that I'm just confirming that these two sections are separate, leg from waist. Find the front snap of my liner and the front snap of my shell and I capture that loop. I'm coming over to the left and I'm going to do the exact same thing. Okay. Keep this center loop tucked out of the way. The loop that came in between your legs, keep that pushed down. Make sure these aren't twisted in between that front snap of the liner front snap of the shell. The reason you want to capture these front loops guys is this in essence becomes your A-frame. This is where you would connect the carabiner of your escape system to. So you want to make sure that these two loops don't fall between your shell and your liner. Once you capture these two front loops, now you're going to go to the back of your gear. Remember I talked about keeping these, these Tails coming out of the water, not up. Now you can kind of see the orientation of these tails once we have it in place in the gear. If I had it the opposite way, these tails would be sticking up in the air. It's not going to set nearly as nice in your gear. So you want these tails going down. The water knot, though, goes above that back snap. That's going to keep it from dropping in between your gear, and it's going to keep this water knot accessible so you can examine it. Uh, inspect it periodically. Now, here's where we finish. I'm going to weave the, the rest of the waist portion through the remaining snaps. Now, depending on the make and model of your turnout gear, your snap configuration is going to change. So you're going to have to take a look at it, kind of do some planning, map it out on how you want to weave the rest of your, your waist strap uh, through those snaps. I have two sets of snaps on my right and two sets of snaps on my left. I'm going to start from that back center snap and because the water knot's going over the top of that back center snap, I'm going to go underneath the next series of snaps. Again, I'm always making sure that I'm minimizing the twists. The one underneath, now I'm going over the top of that second set. This one you can't really see but remember this portion of the waist now is going down to that center loop in between the legs and that's what locks this one in place as this final loop goes over the front, uh, front set of snaps. Come back to the center again. Check for any twists because I'm going over the top of that back snap. I'm coming underneath this first set. Check for twists. Come over the top of that second set of snaps. So here's what the harness looks like with the boots in place. You notice that I have easy access to both the right and left side loops and that they've been captured by the front snaps of the liner and shell. 
The rest of the waist portion of the webbing is woven in between the other snaps and it's tucked in nice and neatly, but I still have access to that back water knot. And that's important guys because periodically you're going to want to check the tails coming out of the water knot. You want to keep these tails at three to four inches. That's a safety so you're ensuring that the knot doesn't become unfastened. So make sure that you can get access to these and that you check them and make sure that that knot is staying nice and tight. Tuck in the tails. Let's take a look at dying. Okay, let's take a look at the harness loaded, hanging from an escape system. After you've down your gear for the very first time, you're probably going to need to make some adjustments to balance off both loops as well as the webbing at your legs and your waist. But once you do, you should be good to go. Remember, you're still going to want to check the back of your harness periodically to make sure that that water knot is still intact. From that point forward, your options are open. One thing you can do is take a carabiner, connect it to one of your loops, and pre-attach it to your escape system. Keep in mind, though, that you need to be connected to both loops before you deploy your system. My suggestion is that you experiment with different configurations to see what works best for you. Good luck.